Hi, this is Bob from Turbot. If you're looking for a quick demo of Turbot Guardrails features, you're in the right spot. Let's get started. In this demo, we're going to show how you can automatically sync your Kubernetes resources directly into your ServiceNow CMDB through Turbot Guardrails. To get started, you would have already connected your ServiceNow instance to Turbot Guardrails by supplying a username and password, client ID and secret, and pre-creating an application scope. So in my environment, I already have a application I created purposely for Turbot Guardrails, and I am syncing a, a number of Kubernetes resource types already into my CMDB. Uh, but I want to take additional resources that I haven't synced yet, and for the purpose of the demo, I'll show how to then sync those resources and manage those uh, table configurations and records uh, so that you can bring in the right data that you're looking for right into the CMDB. So I have a Kubernetes cluster here for an example, and one of the resource types that I want to sync are replica sets. And so here I have three replica sets uh, within this Kubernetes cluster that I want to sync. Uh, so I have a core DNS and two Nginx resources that uh, are running out there in the wild, and I want to sync those into ServiceNow. So as one of the policies to set within Turbot Guardrails are within Kubernetes, and then replica set in this example, I have a collection of ServiceNow policies that could be set to manage the CMDB CI table, as well as the records that will then populate those tables. And these policies sit right alongside your other guardrail policies uh, that you might be managing of your Kubernetes resources. So managing the labels, the annotation, and approved configurations of your resources. For the ServiceNow policies, one of the policies is around updating your table. Uh, so what is the table that you want to sync? And so here I can select a policy. I could select the location of where I want these tables to be uh, configured from. Here I'm picking my Acme organization, and then I can choose that I want to enforce guardrails to manage this ServiceNow table. That ServiceNow table definition is managed in another policy. So in this example, I have a ServiceNow table that is for Kubernetes rep replica set. It's extending off the CMDB CI table, and this is purposeful uh, table extension. Now you can have guardrails automatically create a table. It can extend off an existing table like I'm doing here, uh, or it can sync to a, a table or a table extension that's already in place within your ServiceNow CMDB. You can also define your columns. So for my replica set, I'm just gonna bring in the annotations, the cluster name, uh, labels, namespaces, etc. And so I'm just doing a few, few of the configurations to bring over as an easy example. And then later on the demo will show how you can extend these configurations with more data from your Kubernetes cluster uh, or bringing in data from outside sources like your Turbot Guardrail CMDB or other data sources that might be in sync with Turbot Guardrails. This is already set. I already have this table being created. And so here I have this Kubernetes replica set table. I have those fields that are already created by Turbot Guardrails. And so at this point, we're looking to populate this data uh, with the Kubernetes information that's already captured. Going back to my ServiceNow policies, we have another suite of policies to manage your configuration items. And so here I could set a policy. I could say I'm going to put this across my Acme organization and I'm going to choose to enforce syncing it. Now, there are other options. We can uh, manage a sync that handles any creations, updates, and deletes. So if a new Kubernetes cluster is discovered uh, or if there's uh, changes to an existing cluster, like maybe there's a new replica set or a change in configurations of replica set, guardrails will automatically sync those configurations in real time to your ServiceNow CMDB. For deletions, you can choose to have guardrails automatically delete the resource, uh, or you can have it in an archival state. So keep the resources in ServiceNow, but update an archive status uh, that the resource is no longer active. For this example, I'm just gonna do a full sync, hit update. Okay, great. Now that policy is set, Guardrails is going to go off and it's going to take all the configuration data that's uh, in the Guardrails CMDB and sync that into the ServiceNow CMDB. So we should see those three replica sets get synced into here. All right, great. Now all those configurations are in. So I have my two Nginx, I have a core DNS, uh, and those are now synced in with the data that I was uh, looking to populate. Changes to these configurations are also captured. 
And so here, as an example for this Nginx deployment, I have three replicas. Now, if I was gonna make a change to those configurations, I'll actually see that be updated in the ServiceNow CMDB. If I was to update my Nginx uh, deployment and change my replicas from three to let's say one, and then save, and then deploy. So now I've deployed that new configuration. Going back to my service now, I can either see that change be made, or one of the other nice features of Turbot Guardrails is that I can actually track that configuration drift within Guardrails as well. So as an example, if I was to go to my Nginx deployment and go to my activity, I would actually see that the configuration drift here was three replicas, now it's down to one replica. And so that configuration is tracked in the guardrail CMDB, but then also synced into your ServiceNow CMDB as well. And so here, if I was to do a refresh, we should see that three now drop down to a one. Yep. And now that's captured there. So guardrails is handling real-time updates, so it's continuously in sync uh, with your Kubernetes clusters. One of the other configuration items that we can then manage is adjustments to the table, as well as bring in other types of data into the CMDB. So one of the other policies that we can set are the, the table definitions to extend that a bit further. And so going back to that policy that I showed earlier, we can edit this policy to add additional columns. And so uh, here on the replica set configurations, if I wanted to edit this, and then paste in some additional table names. So here I'm, I'm adding the cluster UID, I'm adding a business owner field, and I'm adding an application name field. And so I'll update the policy there. And so now I have additional columns that will be created onto the table. So if we were to go back to the table here, we'll see some new columns uh, get added, and then we can add them to our form. And now we have these new columns that are in place. And so I go down to uh, cluster UID, uh, also the application name, and then we'll add that business owner field. All right, great. Now we have these three fields that are added into the, uh, the form. And what we're gonna do next is now we're gonna update the con configuration item records to populate that data. So going back into Turbot Guardrails, go back to policies, replica set, service now, configuration items. Here is where we can manage the, uh, what data is being populated into those CI records. And so here we're using a calculated policy uh, that's pulling in data from the Turbot Guardrail CMDB. And that can come from your Kubernetes clusters, come from uh, cloud metadata, can come from third-party sources, as well as data within Turbot Guardrails uh, about security controls, operational controls. Here, we're pulling in uh, already existing ones. So uh, the annotations, the, the cluster name deployment, these are already configurations that already had set to sync. Now, if I wanted to also include uh, the UID, the business owner and app name, I have these commented out so make this easier to update. So here, if I'm gonna add, great. Now I'm pulling in data for the cluster UID. This data is actually coming from metadata of Kubernetes. So it's just additional fields that I wasn't syncing in earlier. The business owner, I'm actually within guardrails. I have a folder structure that defines the ownership of the Kubernetes cluster. So they're syncing into these folder structures uh, for that inheritance. And then for the app name, I'm gonna elevate one of the labels that are on the Kubernetes configurations. And I'm gonna elevate that out of the label column and then bring it into its own column uh, that defines the application name. So I'll update the policy here. Okay, great. And now coming back into ServiceNow, we'll give it a, a couple seconds here, and then we'll start to populate this data. So we'll give it a refresh to see if it's come through. Great, so now the data has automatically come through. So here you'll see that that app label, that Nginx label here is now elevated to its own column. This particular replica set doesn't have that label, which is why this is blank. The cluster UID was brought in and then the business uh, name, which is shared services across all three.
there's a ton of other examples. There's a lot of possibilities to get your data from Kubernetes or other third-party sources into ServiceNow. And one of the benefits here is to keep an, an active and always updated ServiceNow CMDB with not only your Amazon, Azure, and Google data that you can also sync from GuardRails, but now you can also do so with Kubernetes. If you feel that your organization would benefit from Turbot GuardRails, we would love to talk. Please reach out to us at turbot.com guardrails and more information is in the video description below.